pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I thought you were taking a knee. Thank you, everyone. Uh, now I'll ask staff if there are any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda. Staff has one change to tonight's agenda. Uh, staff recommends continuing item 8A as the applicant has asked not to hear that item this evening. Okay. Can we have a motion to continue item 8A? So moved. A second. It's a motion and a second. Um, and roll call vote, please. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Bertrand. I approve. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. Thank you. Next tonight presentations. We have two presentations this evening. Um, and um, we'll start with the A, which is um, um, one of my favorite presentations because it's Mayor for a Day essay contest. Um, and Nikki's here to introduce the middle school division winner recognition. Uh, recognition. Go ahead, Nikki. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. I am here with uh, great privilege to introduce to you Sydney Swanson, who is the Mayor for a Day Essay Contest in our middle school division as a student of New Brighton Middle School. Would you oh. like to? Well, um, yeah, I have a certificate. And is Sydney, are you going to come up and sit in the mayor's seat and read your essay? Yeah, why don't you come do that and then I'll give you your certificate. As mayor of a capital, I have a few on ideas on things that could make <clears throat> a significant difference. Although I don't think it'd be possible to do all this in 24 hours, I'd work on more sanitary bathrooms, cleaner beaches, and increasing parking in the village. I think these issues need to be fixed because they affect how we enjoy Capitola. First of all, dirty bathrooms are a big issue. Bathroom cleanliness is significant because the bathrooms affect how it works for your community and how it feels. People come in wet and sandy, which leaves the bathrooms nasty. As mayor, I will try my best to fix this issue by regularly cleaning and encouraging people to rinse off their feet or body before entering and be more conscious about the germs, sand, water, and dirt they bring in. Next, I will address the issue of dirty beaches. According to the Santa Cruz Sentinel, of 10 beaches that made the list statewide, Capitola came in at third on the list for dirtiest water. To try and fix this problem of dirty water and trash on our beaches, I will get volunteers and school students in our district to help clean waste off our shores. I will also encourage community members and tourists to pick up their trash daily to help us get off that dirtiest water list. Lastly, I will add more parking around the village. I notice it's becoming challenging to get parking. Many tourists leave or need to park far away. This could affect small businesses that rely on tourists to stay open. To fix this, we could make a multi-level parking lot. This will make parking easy to find, but how will we pay for it? We will try to get donations from local businesses, community members, and tourists. We also have an event like an auction to raise money for this parking lot. If we still don't have enough money, there could be a small tax for middle class citizens, a more significant tax for wealthy citizens. Overall, I have many ambitious goals that may not be possible to complete in a day, but with more time, I believe I could achieve these goals and make a difference. Yes, you can. Yes. <laughs> Great job. I think Sydney okay. just set our work plan for next yep. year. <laughs> you heard it. Shall we do a group photo? Yes, let's oh, do yeah. that. Here, yeah. come, up, come back here, Sydney. And you don't know my sure. Sure. The family can come up and just take so a group photo with the photo if you want. Take a photo. Yeah, we'll see. 
yeah. Maybe it was. I know, and I'm going to say, yeah, that was good. Come back here. She's got it. Oh, here comes Mom. Oh, look at Mom. Yeah, yeah, come on in. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. That's great. One, two, three. We'll do one this way with this. <laughs> 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 okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. And here's your certificate of commendation and to proudly present it to Cindy Swanson, City of Capitola, Mayor for the day. So there you are. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Good Thank job. you. That's it. Good job. Thank you. Nice job. You know, we have an election coming up for city council members, <laughs> and so if there's city council members out in the audience or are out in Zoom who are listening in, I think you may have heard some campaign. Uh, talking points that you may want to address and certainly sounds like there's some goals there for the future council so thank you Sydney well done several of our boards and commissions have youth seats also if you're interested in influencing the city before you run for council environment committee <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. and um, well, next, I'm going to uh, move us on to the next uh, presentation, which is the introduction of a new uh, customer service office coordinator, Liliana Carasoza. Did I say that correctly? Well, um, who wants, to, who's going to do the introduction? Chloe? Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you so much, Mayor Story and Council. We are all thrilled to introduce you to Liliana Carasoza. She is our new customer service office coordinator. That is a position formerly known as our receptionist. That's our front desk person, better known as the face of the city. And we love her. So <laughs> I'm so excited that she's here and able to meet you. She brings um, excellent customer service experience to the city. Uh, started working as a paralegal for about three years, then moved to working for Santa Clara County Behavioral Health as a lead mental health peer support worker. So she's seen it all. She can meet everything that comes her way. And we are just already so impressed with her wonderful personality, her customer service, her willingness to help, her can-do attitude. She came today at 6 to help me set up for her introduction. <laughs> so that just is a tidbit about who she is and what she brings to the city. So Liliana, come on up. Thank you all. It's an honor to meet you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council members. I'm truly excited and blessed to work in a community where I live. And so serving the same people, community members, has always been um, a dream for me because I've commuted over the hill to Santa Clara County. And so being home in the county that I grew up in is truly a blessing. And I really appreciate everyone's time. And I look forward to what I can bring to the table. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, uh, on behalf of the City Council and the City of Capitola, welcome to Capitola. Um, we feel fortunate to have you. Um, and, um, you know, now that we're opening back up after the pandemic, mm -hmm. it's your position is going to be, I think, very crucial uh, for uh, the city as you will be interfacing with the public. Um, and that's just going to get, um, I think, more and more uh, of an increase uh, in people coming back to City Hall. Yes. So welcome. Thank and you. Um, other council members want to say, say a few words? or I'm just um, happy to know that you are local and you yes. get to live and work here. And that's, I think, something that everybody strives for. And mm -hmm. we're lucky to have somebody who's invested in the community to help others, too. So thank you and thank welcome. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good night. Okay, good night. Yes. Um, next, we have additional materials. So do we have any additional materials for on tonight's agenda? Um, yes, so we did receive three regarding item 8A, um, though as you did just vote, that item has been continued. Thank you. Okay, but those comments will be made a part of the record uh, for future reference. Yes, and okay. they are at the back of the room as All well. All right, great, thank you. Next is uh, oral communications. This is an opportunity for members of the public to address the city council on 
on um, items that are either not on tonight's agenda or are on the consent agenda for this evening. Um, just so that everybody is aware, we have a short uh, consent agenda items the, the consideration of the minutes from the October 13th meeting, the development services technician job description, consider staffing changes in the city manager and police departments, and consider adopting proposed resolution allowing for continuation of teleconferencing during the COVID pandemic. Um, those are the consent items. Does anyone who wish to address the council during public comment? Seeing none, um, Chief, did you want to take this opportunity? No, nope, not yet? Okay. Um, then I'll go out to our Zoom audience and see if there's anyone there that would like to address the council. Um, I don't see anyone. No one. Okay. All right, next we'll move to staff and city council comments, and we'll start with staff comments. We have a couple of them for you this evening. The first is that, um, unfortunately, the tech gremlins have bitten again, and it doesn't look like our timer is working this evening. So if we will, everyone's just gonna need to make sure they're paying attention to the three minute timer for future speakers. In addition, we have actually also gotten another piece of equipment that Chloe and I are very hopeful is gonna help make these hybrid meetings less stressful for the two of us. So we hope to have that new piece of equipment installed and ready by the January meeting. That's our goal. Um, so I know that it's all behind the scenes stuff, but I think that it's gonna be a positive change and we'll let the operator back there operate the camera that's going out on Zoom, which would then let that camera pan over to me, for example, when I'm talking now or to the speaker at the podium. And then lastly, I think the chief has an update for the public safety incident that occurred today in the county. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I just wanted to provide a quick uh, update or just uh, let you know about the alarming call that we had this morning of a, a credible, what we thought was a credible threat of an active shooter at Santa Cruz High. Um, it initiated uh, a countywide response that all of our agency responded along with the other agencies. Um, it took a while to determine that it was actually a hoax, that it was a hoax, but um, understanding that uh, it, it really sh put a lot of shock and fear into the community. Um, uh, like I said, it was a really good collective effort on a part of like law enforcement. Um, I will say I'm so proud of our staff immediately responded. We had officers coming in off duty to come and backfill what assignments that they needed to do. Um, it took several hours before it was able to kind of un untangle itself and figure out that it was a hoax. Um, but like I said, it was a very, very alarming call that you know no one wants to hear, definitely from, from our community, that put it, all the schools into lockdown. And so it was really traumatizing for all the students and it's gonna have uh, pretty lasting impacts. And so I just wanna let everyone know about that. Um, it's, it's, it seems to be kind of a common theme that's going around with these kind of these spoof calls and these hoax calls, but they come in and they seem very, very credible. And we have a lot of mechanisms that kind of triage those calls. And so um, it's really unfortunate that that had to happen. And it's really unfortunate it had to happen in our community. So I just want to update you on all that and really just kind of um, let you know of how proud I am of our staff and, and, and our response. So. Um, and I will say too that um, w there's going to be some lessons learned here as well because we practice with the training, but when it actually happens, when you have everyone kind of coming in and getting those assignments, so I'm sure there's going to be, you know, debriefing with it, uh, and then we'll have a lot of lessons learned f from it, and then we can learn from that as well. So we'll we'll do what we can to take away from it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chief, for briefing us on that incident. And um, yeah, I know. I think that well, I certainly when I heard about it, it was a scary episode. Um, and uh, it's one of the worst things that a parent um, can imagine happening. Um, and um, I think it, it is a, at least a tribute to um, the, the, I guess, the force turnout uh, and the fact that Capitola PD provided mutual aid. Um, and um, just wanted to assure if something like that were to happen at New Brighton or around in our school district, would, would that uh, level of mutual aid be reciprocated and there would be that? Okay. That's, Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. That, that's reassuring to know. Um, well, thank you for that update. Um, and, and we're very glad to hear that it really, I mean, was a hoax. I mean, that's um, tremendous in and of itself, but um, it's good to know that there was nobody that was actually hurt or injured yeah. in that process. Um, so. Thank you. Does council members have any comments? 
seeing none. Um, are there other staff um, comments? Um, then I'll go to city council comments. I just wanted to say briefly that if uh, anyone hasn't had a chance to check out the new lights on the palm trees in the village, uh, they're up and they're beautiful. So take a moment to check them out. Yeah, I just wanted to commend the BIA and the city staff um, on putting up those lights. Um, it was a while coming, but um, <laughs> I think it was well worth the wait. Um, and they are very attractive. So good job, BIA. Um, so hearing no other city council comments, I'll move on to the consent items on tonight that I read earlier. These items will all be passed with one vote unless a council member would like to pull an item for further discussion. Are there any items that council would like to pull? Seeing none, I'll um, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move approval of consent. I'll second. And we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Council Member Brown. Aye. Council Member Brooks. Aye. Council Member Bertrand. I approve. Vice Mayor Kaiser. Aye. Mayor Story. Aye. The motion passes unanimously, which will bring us to the general government public hearings for this evening. Uh, item A has been continued uh, to a future date uh, not yet set. Um, and then so we'll move on to item B, which is the permanent local housing allocation grant. The recommended action is just to accept the staff presentation on the five-year plan for permanent local housing allocation funds and provide direction on the proposed allocation of funds. And Katie, you're going to yes. lead uh, us on that? Yeah. Good evening, Mayor Story, and good evening, Council. Uh, before you tonight is an exciting new source of funding towards our affordable housing program in Capitola. Um, it's called the Permanent Local Housing Allocation, PLHA program. Uh, the history on this is that back in 2017, when Senate Bill um, SB2 was approved, it created a new supply of funding for, towards affordable homes in California. Um, the bill established a $75 recording fee for all real estate documents and created a, this new fund with that money. So of the $75 recording fee, 70% of that is put towards the PLHA fund, the Permanent Local Housing Allocation Fund. And the money goes to the local governments in which the transaction occurred. Um, and then as a city council, you get to make a decision on, on how those funds are spent within our city. Um, the intent here is to provide a permanent ongoing source of funding to local governments for unmet housing needs. So very exciting. Um, so the fund, they, they started collecting the funds in 2019, and then from 2020 on, we'll be getting funding every every year out from the, this fund. In 2020, we received 100, and we, um, our allocation is 105,000. I won't go through all of the numbers here, but for the five years through 2024, it's estimated that we'll get 630,000 total. Um, the requirements for an application is that we put together a five-year plan. We also need to hold a public hearing, which we'll do tonight and also at our next meeting. And we need to adopt a resolution that will be sent into the state, um, giving Jamie authorization to apply for this um, funding. So what qualifies for your permanent local housing allocation? On the slide, I list 10 items. Um, there was a brief description of each of these in the staff report. Um, tonight, we're suggesting three that can be um, spent more easily in Capitola with knowing what our needs are. So the, the money that I'm suggesting, um, the majority of it be put towards rental housing projects so that we can partner with a, um, local nonprofits that want to do a development project in our city limits. Um, also, uh, matching funds for the local housing trust fund. I'll talk a little bit about that on a later slide. The further I've looked into this item, there's not much money, no, not much um, guidance on what the qualifications are there. So I'm going to modify my recommendation that was in the staff report. And last, um, 
assisting persons at risk of homelessness. We already do this. We contribute funds to our through the county, and that's the other area that I think we should um, utilize this money. So first, the rental housing projects. Um, the description from the state is that we can utilize for pre-development, development, acquisition, rehabilitation, and preservation of multifamily, residential live work, rental housing that is affordable to extremely low, very low, low, or moderate income households, including necessary operating subsidies. So projects that we could utilize would be similar to, say, the Dakotas on Claire's Ave or the Bay Avenue Senior Apartments where there's a third party managing these affordable housing projects, the city's not, um, the, uh, we're not overseeing. We, we, do, we make sure that they do their reporting annually to the state, but it's not very like intense for our staff, but we could partner, give them funding, help with the production of the housing. So tonight I'll be suggesting that the majority of the money be spent there so that we, have, we can partner with local nonprofits. Um, a second item that they listed is matching funds for your local housing trust fund. Our local housing trust fund currently has $160,000 in it, so we could ask for matching funds for this. There's um, very little guidance on what strings are attached if we were to get our local, um, if we did a, a match. I am working with Paul Ashby, who gives us a lot of uh, he, he's got a really good working relationship with the state HCD office, and he sat in on a few minutes in a few meetings and asked questions about what you know what strings are attached if we were to go to do this match. And at this point, there's not uh, any documentation of exactly what what is required. So at this point, I think we should hold off on that until. Um, we can do more research, and if we decide in the later years that we want to do an amendment, we could go. You know, we could always amend our five-year plan and go back to the HCD. Um, last is assisting persons at risk of homelessness. Right now, um, we um, contribute thirty-one thousand dollars to the Housing for Health Partnership. This used to be called the HAP with the county, and this. Program supports year-round emergency shelter operations for the Salvation Army in Watsonville and also Housing Matters in the city of Santa Cruz. Um, so I think that's a good use of these funds as we're already utilizing funds for that. So here's my original recommendation that was in your staff report. This evening I'm suggesting that we not contribute towards the housing fund and we put that money toward, also towards affordable housing rental projects. So on this slide, it's, this is my final recommendation for the permanent local housing allocation. Um, so with that, that's, this is the five-year plan that I would like to, that I would suggest that we submit to the state with our application. So the first three years, all of the funds would go towards affordable rental projects. And then in years 2023 and 2024, um, we would, fund the homeless partnership um, with these funds up to 35,000, so bumping our funding to the county from 31,000 to 35, and then utilize the rest of the funding for affordable rental housing projects. Um, and these, these are estimates for years 2023 and 2024. If there were, if we were actually to, um, if the number ended up being larger, we would get that larger sum. Um, and, the, I also want to comment that for the affordable rental housing projects, I have been in contact with a couple different nonprofits that are interested in doing projects in Capitola. So I think if we were to dedicate this money towards those funds, we could see some projects happening in the next um, few years during this five year cycle. So with that, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. Yes, Council Member Brooks. Thanks, Katie. Um, so my first question is, so this is, these are restricted dollars, correct? They are. Okay, and what happens when we don't use those dollars from the year to year um, throughout the five-year plan? It just rolls over into the next year? So that's an excellent question. Um, I have that, we, that's one question that we are asking HCD currently is like, what is the time frame for spending um, and does it roll over? Uh, Paul Ashby, 
quickly commented on this 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 afternoon and said that he thinks it's all going to be tied to the five years and so it will continue to roll over um, but we are trying to get answers on that so okay um, and so do you know how much we give to oh not HAP anymore um, the H 31,000 a year but we already fund them do we know how much we already fund them it's 31,000 was the last funding and that's why I did not suggest funding 2020 2021 or 2022 because those years have been funded okay um, and that comes out of our general fund that the most recent money came out of our redevelopment agency fund because we have some housing funds in there due to a loan being paid off last year mm -hmm. so I guess I'll get to the comments later about why I'm asking that question, but I, I'm just trying to make the connect of why we would want to fund in 23, 24 if we're already funding and we know the cost of building, you know, if we want to use some of those funds here in the city, it's so expensive. So what made you want to continue or want to begin to fund them again in 23 and 24? Sure. I think our the redevelopment agency fund is um, more they're more flexible than probably the funding from the state so that was my initial thoughts on that of why we would stop taking money out of our redevelopment agency dollars and utilize this funding because we know you can use this for shelters so I see and, and the redevelopment funding can be used for, for projects for, for projects mm -hmm. so it's sort of the same thing it is okay yep that's that's okay yeah there's one other detail is is that under redevelopment law, you're supposed to spend um, you're supposed to spend down your balances, and there are actual timelines to do so in the public in the health and safety code. As you know, redevelopment agencies have been dissolved, and so those it's not clear necessarily who would be enforcing those timelines. So I do think that we need to get those funds out the door, and so I think that our, our target is to get those funds out the door if we can in the next couple of years, and so then transitioning our funding for the um, what was called the HAP over to these PLHA funds for the go forward period. So that's kind of the overall strategy is, is that we do think we can't just continue to use the RDA funds. It was a $2 million loan at $35,000 at a time. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from council members? I think I just need a clarification. So the, um, I think it was like activity six, which is the, um, yeah, sorry. Thank you for the homeless. So that goes, is that directly into Capitola or is that part of a countywide thing? It's a countywide program. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Which, which qualifies under this program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I had a question. Um, and I want to, I'll, I'll preference it with, um, a little recognition that over the uh, past decades, um, Capitola has, uh, participated with our uh, mobile home park residents and assisting them to buy out their parks. Uh, and we have successfully done that, um, except for one, um, which is um, Cabrillo Mobile Home Park. Um, and I know that's not currently an opportunity, but if it were to become an opportunity sometime in the near future, would, are there any other funds that are here? It doesn't look like it that would be available for that purpose. And then um, and, and the two-part question, I also understand concerning the housing trust fund and the balance that was shown, I thought didn't um, the nonprofit um, pay back to us the loan to them from Castle? And that was about a, a million dollars. So I was just wondering if that is somehow connected um, to this additional funding. Okay, thank you. Um, so for your first question on more for the mobile home park, that's an ownership opportunity and under the PLHA program, there isn't there, we could um, put future funds towards ownership rather than rental. So that is an option. So that's something we can look at down the line and start collecting money for that purpose. Um, also the um, Castle, when they paid off that two million dollars, is the two million dollars that we're referencing for the redevelopment funds. So um, that is what we paid for the homeless, the regional homeless contribution, uh, for the past three years. 
well, the l last year we utilized it for that because the money had just come in. But so that is active, and that, that money can also be utilized for but if the be. opportunity arose okay. for the mobile home park. Yeah, is there any risk of that redevelopment money of it being uh, taken back by the state if we don't utilize it within? So, so that was what I mentioned to Council Member Brooks in that last response. So they're technically under redevelopment law, they, they have a situation where they call excess surplus, which describes a situation where you've accumulated in your low mod housing fund, this fund that we hold our, our money in more than I think it was three years worth of accumulated receipts. It's not clear to anyone who's looked at this, who I've talked to about what that means today, because there's no new money coming in other than loan repayments. So there used to be a situation where you could end up in excess surplus, where you had too big a balance and ostensibly you'd have to transfer it away to somebody else. So I do think we should prioritize getting those funds out first. I don't know for sure whether anybody's actually looking very closely at it for a timeline. I would also note to go back to your question about um, potentially using some of the PLHA funds to assist with a for sale project for a mobile home park acquisition. I do believe that we could amend this plan during the five year period In the if an okay. opportunity became available. All right. Thank, thank you for that response. And, um, and so with that, I'll, um, I'll see now if there's any members of the public that would like to address the council on this item. Seeing none, I'll um, see. Is there anyone in the Zoom world that would like to? No. None? <laughs> no, <Okay>. thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, um, then I will bring this item back to the council for further uh, discussion and, um, and uh, possible action. Um, and actually, the recommended action is to just to provide direction on the proposed allocation of funds. You don't need a motion to approve the particular plan? No, I'll be coming back at the next meeting um, with a resolution for at that the time. staff and the five-year plan. And is this going into our new housing element? It will be mentioned in our new housing element okay. as one of our programs, yes. All right. Um, so uh, with that, I don't, are there any other Council comments on the item. All right, seeing none, um, I think I would just like to close and um, encourage future council members um, to, um, I think, keep it on our radar and our ability to, you know, really assist the residents of Castle Boba Home Park um, be able to uh, buy out, um, you know, their homes um, and then. Um, that will cover, that will be all the mobile homes in Capitola uh, will now be resident owned. Um, so thank you for that. Um, we look forward to receiving the resolution at the next meeting. With that, that will bring us to item um, 8B, strike that, 8C, uh, which is donations report full year 2021-22. And the recommended action is to receive the annual donations and contributions report. Yeah. Jim, are you? Good evening, Mayor and Council. So our, our last item on tonight's agenda is the annual donations report, which we try to bring to you each October. And this covers the donations that we received in the prior fiscal year, as well as grants. Um, just by way of background, um, the city of Capitola obviously benefits greatly from generosity from, from grants and from uh, nonprofit agencies and others that donate to the city. And in July of 2013, we passed a uh, city council adopted an admin policy for donations. And um, through that policy, it authorizes the city manager to accept and appropriate donations or grants of 5,000 or less. And um, also established a procedure that we're doing tonight to acknowledge and report on the do donations that we have received. Um, so first, um, on the donations total, uh, total donations, we received about $2.4 million of donations and grant funding. Just under 79,000 of that was um, 
well, we have values of 5,000 or less, but I also like to acknowledge um, through this process um, the uh, SoCal Unified Elementary School District, which donated $16,000 towards scholarships for the after school program. Um, also, slightly over 5,000, we had um, $5,250 from the Public Safety Foundation for uh, the camp program, Camp Capitola and Recreation. Um, the uh, 9266 museum donations, those are um, donations that come in on a weekly basis, anywhere from, could be $10 all the way up to $500. Um, and, and that was actually a pretty good year. That's a couple thousand higher than we've been doing, so that was a good year. A um, couple of three donations for plain air that came in, and then um, we had a really good year for donations for the Twilight concerts, 46,000. And I wanted to just kind of daylight um, a few of them, because some folks gave twice last year. And usually we see donations from 1,000 on up to usually 2,000, but um, we had a number of folks that donated over $2,000, and so I just kind of wanted to acknowledge those folks, and I've listed them up there on the screen. They're also in the agenda packet. But um, a really good year as far as donations for the Twilight Concert Series as we got that going again. I don't want to read all of them. You can read them. Um, as far as the grant side, we were just under 2.3 million, um, and the, basically five grants. The um, first one was for Park Avenue storm damage that was uh, Department of Transportation, almost 287,000. We got just under $46,000 for the street bollards in the village that we put up for the special events. That was a from Homeland Security. Um, we got our second installment of the American Rescue Plan funding, so $1.2 million, um, and that's kind of been classified as COVID revenue replacement, and the majority of those dollars have been programmed towards the WARF project and CIP. Um, we've drawn down this next one, the 525, or almost 526,000, that is the portion that we've drawn down of the $1.9 million grant. So we're starting to spend the, the Coastal Conservancy grant that we got for $1.9 million, a little over half a million last year. And then um, the final one was two hundred and just under 36000 for coronavirus relief through CDBG. Um, a lot of that, I want to say 150000 of that was um, small business loans to local businesses to help them get through the pandemic. And then the remainder went out to nonprofits, I want to say Community Bridges, Gray Bears, and Second Harvest um, as kind of a supplement, a replacement supplement, whatever, for the um, community grant program to keep those programs going. Um, and that is the end of my report for tonight. And our recommendation is to just receive the report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right. Thank you. Other questions from council members? Does the city send out acknowledgments or thank yous to the individuals or and businesses that donate? I know the Twilight concerts, you know, we acknowledge them, you know, at the actual concerts, but is there something that goes out officially from the city to the um, For the museum, yes. Um, Frank was really good and Deborah has, has continued that. Every time that we get a donation, regardless of size, we let um, Deborah know and she sends out a thank you letter. I have a ha small handful of folks that will um, that are bigger donors that would like to get take it off of their taxes so I do send out some letters for mm -hmm. that as well throughout the year. Um, I don't know about plain air and I think Kelly does. I think through the banners there's advertising for the Twilight concerts and I think she sends out stuff as well for the yeah. concerts. Yeah. Okay, I just think it'd be nice, I mean, you know, as the city, because it's a significant amount of money and yeah. trying to just to provide some of uh, that acknowledgement, which would be, um, you know, it, and it's kind of, of nurturing the donors um, mm -hmm. to be able to give year after year. Um, so with that, yes. Yeah, just uh, one question, if I may. So the money that comes in through the uh, fireworks display I thought those were donations. I just don't know how that works. Maybe you could explain that. I don't know that there's money that comes in through the fireworks display. I think um, the well, Monty Foundation just. I thought they donate to us and. They and put I, on the they, they put on yeah, the fireworks show. They yeah we don't put on the fireworks show. The Monty. No, Foundation I know we don't. Does. But I don't think they don't. Not for the fireworks. Monty Foundation donates for a variety of things. 
Um, I don't think we've gotten any. The last was the library. I think we have a new one that'll show up on next year's report. Okay. I don't recall off the top of my head what that was. So the Monty Foundation uses the fireworks as a fundraising right. mechanism, and then Monty Foundation then has turned around and made donations to the city for all sorts of wonderful things. We have the skate park at McGregor, the resurfacing project at the tennis courts, as well as the children's wing in the library. So that's sort of the connection between the fireworks and ultimately donations the city has received from the Monty, Monty Foundation. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, any members of the public like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, um, do we have anyone? We have anyone on Zoom at all? No. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> that answers that question. Um, well, um, then I'll bring it back, and I think our only task this evening is to receive the report, and it looks like it has been received. Thank you so much, and. And I just want to thank, um, you know, here publicly, you know, all the individuals and all the uh, businesses that donate, you know, their hard-earned money uh, to the various causes um, here in Capitola and the events that we put on, the Twilight Concerts in particular, the Plein Air, um, Camp Capitola, um, you know, and all our granting partners. Um, you know, we couldn't do this without them, and, um, and yeah, we should... Um, whenever we can uh, show our gratitude to um, the donors. So thank you for that um, and bringing that to us so that we can be aware of it. And, um, and with that, I'll move us on to the next item, which is actually adjournment. So I will adjourn this meeting this evening to our next regularly scheduled meeting on November 10th, 2022, starting at 7 p.m. in these council chambers. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.